Today's video is a continuation of my series on how to purify over-the-counter reagents. Uh, and this one is going to be on how to separate mixtures of liquids. So before I'd already done a distillation just to uh, improve the purity of one substance. That was acetone, just more or less pure acetone. Um, this is going to address if you have different solvents mixed together and you only want one of them or you want to split them up into their component parts. So what I'm going to be starting with is this paint stripper, KS3 Premium Paint Stripper. That, according to the MSDS, is made of 60 to 100 percent um, dichloromethane, uh, 10 to 30 percent methanol, and then 1 to 5 percent petroleum distillates. And this stuff is extremely viscous. It's like it's really nasty. Um, it's just a goop, uh, and that's what the petroleum distillates have done to it. It's it's thickened so that it's easy to spread on to your surface that you're stripping. So you can see in here it's just this nasty um, kind of gray material. Uh, and I've also added boiling chips. That's what the the black pieces are. Uh, the boiling chips are going to help this thing boil. So the reason that we can do this is because the, the two components, the two main components, dichloromethane and methanol, both have different enough boiling points uh, that a simple distillation should be enough to separate them. Um, so we're just going to heat this up and it's in a water bath because um, dichloromethane boils below the boiling point of water so we can use this method um, and that'll heat it up and drive out the, the DCM which will go up into the still head as just a standard distillation condense in the condenser and be collected over here uh, which is in an ice bath just to ensure that it stays a liquid uh, and this time I have my thermometer adapter with the thermometer head positioned about even with the joint. So that's where you want the, the red part of the, the, the bulb needs to be even with the joint of the adapter here. Um, so you can get a correct reading on the vapor temperature. And so I'll just be taking a look at that as the distillation proceeds. And I'll notice stop when the temperature of the vapors starts to exceed the boiling point of dichloromethane. That means that other things are starting to come over like primarily the methanol. So in no time at all, we're getting a little bit of boiling going on. Um, the dichloromethane boils at about 40 degrees Celsius, and methanol is 65. So that should be enough of a difference so that simple distillation will work. Uh, if, if you get two solvents that are very close to each other in boiling points, then you need a fractionating column, and you have to go to fractional distillation, which is a bit more complicated, and I don't have a fractionating column. Um, so we'll hope that this will work out. So as this boils, uh, I'm going to watch the temperature on the thermometer and make sure it hovers around 40. Uh, once, Like I said, once it starts to rise above that, uh, we'll know that some methanol is going to start to come over, uh, and that's when I want to stop the distillation to collect as much um, DCM as I can, or at least as, as pure as I can get it. Um, inevitably, some methanol is going to come over as well. Uh, you can get rid of that by um, a second distillation you know take your take your product from this and distill it again and that should improve a little bit and again if you have a fractionating column that's going to help um, really the main thing for me is to just separate out the solvents from this this plastic goop so that it's actually usable for me so it's only been 10 minutes or so and things are moving along pretty smoothly you can see we got a nice boil going on um, and it's refluxing in the still head here. You can see it's condensing on my thermometer and dripping off every so often. Uh, and the condensation front has moved into the condenser. You can see some inside the tube. And we're getting a fairly steady flow of product. So that should be my dichloromethane. And of course I put the thermometer in at just the right depth where the temperature I want to see it is uh, covered. It's, it's actually in the adapter. Um, but if you kind of look down into it, it looks like the temperature is about 35-ish, um, somewhere in that range. Uh, and that that's probably, you know, like I said, uh, dichloromethane boils at 40. so it's a little bit lower than it should be I think because of the condensation so like I said it's condensing on the bulb of the thermometer and that's going to um, lower the temperature a little bit and throw off the reading slightly 
But uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty confident that what I'm actually getting is dichloromethane. So we'll continue on. It's starting to get dark here now, but I wanted to show you that I improved my system a little bit. Um, we still got a pretty nice speed boil going on, uh, but what I've done is I've wrapped a cloth around the, uh, the still head and adapter uh, to keep the heat in and that's going to more efficiently so it'll stay a vapor in here and only condense in the condenser which is where I would wa rather it condense anyways um, and we're still getting a pretty good dip drip rate over here and actually the thermometer is now showing something that makes sense which may be hard to see but it's just poking up at the uh, 40 degree level there which is where it should be. So throughout this whole distillation it should stay at that level and then once it begins to rise up towards 60 uh, that's when I'll stop. So the temperature in the still head has risen to about 45 degrees uh, and the boiling has slowed significantly. You can see down here that it's barely doing anything. So I think now's a good time to stop the distillation. So I'm just going to turn the heat off and uh, unwrap everything and let it cool down. So here's the product I recovered. Looks to be about 100 milliliters of liquid and you can see it's about the same viscosity as water. Unlike the stuff I started with which was just incredibly thick and just a goop. Uh, so I've recovered about as much as I can. I'll put this in a bottle and store it in the lab fridge. A couple extra notes. When I was cleaning out the flask after this was over, I found that getting the, the uh, polymer goop out of this at the end was a little difficult. It's hard to scrape out of there, especially because it's in a flask. Uh, but kerosene is pretty effective at getting it out. That uh, tends to dissolve the polymer and loosen it up a bit so that it's, it's a lot easier to get out. And then a wash with acetone after that will get rid of the kerosene smell. Also, you definitely want to be keeping your dichloromethane in a fridge or a freezer because it's got a very high vapor pressure. Uh, so the colder you keep it, the better it'll stay in the bottle that you put it in. And finally, my product is likely to be contaminated with a little bit of methanol. Uh, hopefully I stop the distillation soon enough where that's not, there's not going to be too much of it in there, um, but there's inevitably going to be some. And I would imagine also a little bit of water just from the atmosphere uh, or impurities in the paint stripper itself. This stuff can be gotten rid of. Uh, I don't really need to for my application. Uh, purity is not a huge concern. Um, but there are methods to get rid of the water and the methanol if you, if you want. Uh, I believe just a simple water wash will rinse out the methanol because methanol is soluble in water, uh, whereas DCM is not. Uh, and then that will, of course, add more water to the system, which you can then remove by another distillation or using a drying agent like calcium chloride or uh, magnesium sulfate. And if there's interest in that, um, I might do a, a video on purification in the future. Thanks for watching.